Virginia, so I read that you were working on a comedy with a friend, and so I was just wondering if you had asked JoJo for any screenwriting advice. Well, I will <laughs> when we're like, we're, um, we're very much in the early stages of it right now. So we're still at that kind of embarrassed to show each other what we've written. <laughs> so when, when we get past that, definitely. I'm really honest though. Okay, what, what advice would she give? Good. What advice would you give her? Uh, it depends what she's done. But um, yeah, just, I guess the thing that I did, which was most useful to me, which was to get the screenplays of every film that I'd ever loved and oh. dissect them and see what works. And Jeez. if you know it you know, on screen, you yeah. can see what they did in print, and that really helped. Okay, very switching gears. Uh, I know that, I'm sure you hear all the time that Daenerys is such like a, an empowering character, um, but do you think there are ways in which Lou is more of an empowering female character? Well, yeah, this is something that we've, that we've, um, that has been discussed. So Daenerys has got the, um, yeah, the archetypal strength that is kind of something, Incredibly admirable <laughs> and um, an epic in in quality, whereas Lou's strength is so much more uh, attainable. It's so much more real, and it's strength that we all have w within ourselves. And I think that's the um, I think that's where her strength is kind of even more. There's no dragons protecting her. She just has to be brave, mm. and that is um, it's really difficult in in day to day normal modern day life. Yeah. Is that kind of a goal that you had in writing her? Um, Writing a character who maybe on the surface doesn't seem quite as traditionally powerful, but has like all this kind of going on under the surface. Yeah, it's really important to me when I write female characters to write women who um, I've said you know who do stuff instead of buy stuff. And Lou has enormous integrity. She's kind. She tries to change her life through, you know, doing things for other people and changing herself. Um, her goals are not materialistic or you know, finding a man and, you know, everything will be okay. That's not her arc in this story. And yeah, I, I try to ask myself what my teenage daughter would take from any story that I write. And mm -hmm. in this one, I think, you know, Lou would be an okay character to end up like. Um, has anyone ever asked either one of you to tell them something good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You tell said the good. movie last time. Huh? You said yeah, the movie. Yeah, yeah. tell me something yeah, good. I, yeah, tell me something good. Yeah, I said movie for you. <laughs> I'll go with that. Um, Lou has that great monologue about um, conventional, like a conventional life in London and like everything that would entail. Um, it's like a, a beautifully played scene. <laughs> Thank and I was you. wondering for either of you um, if there are things that people expect you to do in your life that you have no interest in doing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I'll tell you one thing. I have three kids, and what I discovered a couple of years ago, um, somebody told, gave me some really wise advice, which they said, if you have kids, you can only do, do one other thing well. And I realized that I was not that interested in having a show home. I was not that interested in being a fashion plate. What I was <laughs> interested in is writing and sitting on the sofa with my kids and, you know, being a nice mum rather than one who was always going, yeah, yeah, I'll do that in a minute. And some women judge you for that. It's interesting, but um, I think if you're upfront about it and just say, you know, you can't, you can't do everything, and um, there, judge me. I don't care. <laughs> what about you? Um, well, um, sort of being now being in a kind of documented position, um, there's a couple of things that I'd rather not do <laughs> um, or sort of have talked about, I suppose. Is, is one of my things. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I know. Um, I'd, I'd rather not do my own washing. That would be great. I'd rather not do that. That's something that I have to do. I remember. But I don't enjoy doing. Sia, the pop star, saying that the best thing about her life now is she never has to change her own loo rolls. Wow. And I thought, that's a really good marker of yeah. success. You're not the person who changes your rules. I definitely change my own. <laughs> <laughs> There's always one behind You've the You've got loop. to change that, lady. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, like Lou's bumblebee tights, what's the most ridiculous thing you wore as children? <gasps> oh, my God. As children? I well, I did wear the bumblebee tights. They were mine. That came from my childhood. <laughs> but I have uh, a particular toe-curling memory in the early 80s of a turquoise pie-crust collar all in one with white nice. cowboy boots. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
I had a velvet dress with bells in it. <laughs> <laughs> so my parents could hear me wherever I Did went. They sewed them in for Christmas. Ching, ling, 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 ling. <laughs> Yeah, it was because it was just That's bells excellent. in it. It was cool at the time, and then after a while, it just was like they knew where I was. Are there things in your closet now that would be at home in Lou's closet? Yeah, plenty. yeah, plenty. Yeah, yeah. I I still yeah. make mistakes. Oh yeah, yeah. My, I don't call them mistakes. No, okay. Um, <laughs> unusual choices. Unusual choices when you're feeling brave. Yeah, but they look oh, better yeah. on you than they do on me. Well, it's yeah, like, I yeah. don't. No, 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 no. Yes. Um, that. Gift that Patrick gives Lou was that inspired by something that happened to you? Oh <laughs> no, 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 not at all. No. Oh, what's if you can? What's the worst gift the boyfriend's ever given you? Oh my god, that's so I can't say that. It's been who? Um, well, it's just sometimes they don't t tastes don't match what, up with each other. Yeah. yeah, there was one. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> There was one piece of jewelry that like, <laughs> woo, yeah. There was one piece of jewelry that wasn't so. Mm. I was very young. We were yeah. very young. I'm talking like like kids stuff. Yeah. But it was still pretty. I bet it cost him all his pocket money. It had yeah, it had like a lot on it. It was like a lot. There was like a lot there was a lot going on. How did you react when you were just like, I love it? Yeah, <laughs> I did a loo. I did a loo. Ooh. <laughs> I'll take your first edition book back. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> or whatever Damn. it was. I wouldn't have, yeah, but anyway. I think um, what's really special about the film um, and the story in general is that both characters are kind of so selfish. Um, it's usually you have like a, you have like a romantic movie and like, oh, like they're flawed, but like it's cute because their flaws bound each other out or whatever. But I think that there are real scenes where Lou says like, yeah, but what about me? Or she doesn't even kind of think about him first. And that sort of, I think unique to movies like this, it sort of breaks the mold a little bit. Um, and was that something that spoke to you right away, or um, as like a flawed, a flawed female character? Well, I just think the authenticness is what spoke to me first, and the fact that the things that she, where you, this, the, the kind of the where she's putting herself first, or like say, put saying, "What about me?" before anything else. I think it's just a testimony to how people can see beyond a disability. And I think that's that's the beautiful thing that's within this is that it's this isn't this isn't trying to be perfect with tinsel and fairy dust and all the magic powder that happens in a lot of these kind of movies. It's much more based in reality, which is testimony to Jojo's perfect writing. And people are messy in real life. They say the wrong thing. I've done it a million times. I say the wrong thing every single day, you know, and I just think, oh God. And in relationships we do it. And, you know, the point at which she sort of says, what about me? And accuses him of being selfish. That's because at that point she's so raw. There's, there's just no filter. And, you know, she's generally pretty loving and supporting, supportive to this guy. But at that point he has hurt her so badly that just uncharacteristic stuff comes out of her mouth because I think that happens with all of us sometimes. Mm -hmm. Was that kind of a, was that a mold that you sought out to break in the sense of other romantic movies don't? Yeah, I didn't want it to be sentimental. I didn't want it to be idealized. Um, I wanted two people who spoke to each other in the way that couples I know speak to each other, which is uh, a wide variety of humor and affection and irritation and bickering and deep, deep love and passion and all those things can coexist, coexist within a relationship in one day. Um, and I, I felt that their story may actually be a little bit more romantic than that because what she's trying to do for him is pretty epic. I don't want to kind of say too much. Um, but at the same time, it's grounded in reality, I hope. It's grounded in the way that people actually speak to each other.